Hey everybody, Chris Grandy. Today's video, you may have missed the boat on long-term care insurance. Let me get more into it, all right? So, sad news I know for retirees. Um, first, I wanna set the stage. Then I want to go into why you do long-term care planning and how it works, and then the changes and how that affects how you should maybe approach this planning, this planning, this part of your planning, okay? So here we go, long-term care. I have here in front of my screen, it, this is my financial planning software. It's what I have here as a hypothetical sample clients who are in their early 60s and they're, they've got a teenager just about to go to college and they have about 850,000 of assets and they're well protected. As far as they have enough you know, savings, they have other stuff in place, they're still working, both making over $100,000 a year and they're, they're considering long-term care coverage. Now, normally what I would say is, is typically we like to plan for three to four years of, of solid home care coverage. And so that means that a typical policy, and what I, I highlighted on my screen right here is, if you can see this, is right here. And you should blow up your screen if you're watching this because I'm going to point to a couple details and on my screen that you may not be able to see unless you're looking at full screen. So... Uh, but what I did here was to put in place a $200 a day long-term care policy. Now, for some reason, long-term care policies go by daily benefit, and that's because when you are getting care, the costs are by the day. All right, so the that's how they did the insurance. But $200 a day is roughly is $6,000 a month, and it's $72,000 a year. So if somebody gets a three-year policy, three times 72, it's two hundred dollars Sixteen thousand dollars a year. You know, the most you can use each day is two hundred dollars each month is six thousand. But if you don't use all that, you can actually stretch it out longer. So that's a typical policy. What I find is that six thousand a month is plenty to handle what most people, if they were to need some care, would experience. Most people don't go into real acute nursing home situations, but a lot of people do end up using home care and needing some kind of assistance. And the healthy spouse needs help because they can't take care of the sick spouse all day like that. So that's the insurance is helpful for that. So we find this usually was, and historically for me, was a good combination of a policy that just about everybody could afford, could stomach paying for, and did a good job covering most of what would happen. This would still this would probably cover 80% at least of a memory care unit. Those could be about 7000 or 7500 a month. And so 6000 a month would cover most of that. So you've got you've got a lot of bases covered here, and I would say, oh, here you go, um, Mr. Mrs. Client, and typically, you know, they may get a long-term care policy. It may cost them twenty-seven hundred dollars a year for that policy, and we'd say, okay, that's good. So this would really work in well. The other benefit of long-term care policies is that many states have you know uh, partnership benefits or something equivalent, which just means that the state Medicaid program will allow will help you will allow you to protect some assets if you have a long-term care policy in place. So what that means is is that uh, you can set aside and some assets as protected from nursing home costs just by owning a minimal amount of long-term care insurance that that program you know that the state prescribes. So that was a side benefit. So not only were you insuring yourself, you also had this kind of benefit that if you used up all your insurance and had to go apply for mass health uh, or to Medicaid, depending on the state you're in, Massachusetts is called Mass Health. If you had to go apply for Medicaid help, that they you could then set aside some of your assets that would not be uh, would not have to be used for long term ca for care because you had one of these policies. So a lot of benefits. And but what we have said over the last ten or fifteen years was, hey, you know what? Um, this this stuff is cheap. Once these insurance companies start figuring out the real cost of care. These aren't going to cost, they're not going to be this cheap anymore. And although some people took advantage of that and some people didn't. And here's what happened. I mean, this is this is why I think for a lot of people are going to have to reconsider how they use long-term care. I want to blow this up. These are actually, um, the reason why the numbers are slightly different is because I took these out of actual clients and wanted to use real numbers and real proposals and real programs that um, one is in place, one isn't <laughs> because of the cost. But in 2012, I had a client, 63-year-old uh, female woman who we proposed just that type of insurance. And the premium ended up being 
just under $29.97 a year. And so she took that. It was good for her. And that, that works well with a plan. And again, not only was it, is it, do you have all those other benefits I talked about, such as, you know, you've got some insurance that could cover most of what people would need for three to four years. And you also have that kind of partnership or, or protection of assets. But if you noticed here, if this couple has $850,000 of assets, you know, the premium is $29.97 a year. Let's say for two people, let's say for two people, it's just under $6,000 a year. If you have $850,000, you're earning 7% a year, you're earning $59,000 return on your investments. This long-term care premium would shave 0.7% off your return. So you would net, if you considered your long-term care as insurance on your assets, because that's what it really is, you get long-term care insurance so you don't have to spend your assets for care. If you think of it that way, then the actual cost is... 0.7% of your investment, and so you only would average a 6.29% return annually. But you know what? You've got your assets. That's not bad. So you're paying 0.7% to make sure that you would not have to touch this money if someone got sick. Because think about it. You know, someone gets sick, spouse gets sick. Is the other spouse just stop living? No, you still have all the same expenses. You've got that 17-year-old going to college. You've got the house. You've got cars. So not only do you have this five, four, five, six thousand dollar a month long-term care bill, but you've got everything else still there. So you don't want to touch your assets because you need those for your retirement for later on. So does it make sense? Does 0.7% for two people to insure that portfolio to make sure you don't have to use your 850000 for health care costs? Is that, is that, make, is that fair? I, I think it is. I think it's pretty good, pretty good insurance. But here's what's happened. 2019, just last year, did this program. 65-year-old client, a couple years older, but exactly the same program as far as $200 a day with an inflation benefit, which we'll talk about in a second, set over $7,000 a year for the same coverage. And in looking down here on the bottom as a percentage of portfolio for two people now, that's almost 1.7% of their investment. Of their investment, So their 7% return on their investment gets shaved down to 53 it's gotten a lot more expensive to insure that money. A lot for some people, you may say that's still worth it, but that is our serious cost, and it makes such a difference. I mean, look at this: if you're 75 now and you thought about buying insurance 10 years ago but didn't, hate to rub it in, but check it out. I mean, you said I'll wait 10 years. I don't want to pay for 10 healthy years of insurance. No problem. You would have paid 29,000 for the last 10 years if this were you 10 years ago. You would have paid twenty nine thousand for the last ten years at, at twenty nine ninety seven a year. This is what this is what you would have been out of pocket. But look at this: if you go out twenty years, you'd pay fifty nine thousand nine forty six. Now instead, you wait. Look at the ten year cost now. And this is for someone who's only sixty five. Let's say you're now seventy three. Ten years later, it's going to be even more than this. Ten year cost is seventy two thousand, more than double the twenty year cost of this. So really, the, these premiums have gone up, the cost has gone up, the cost of waiting has gone up, and, you know, we talked about it a lot. We'd say, gosh, these insurance companies, man, they're, they're selling this stuff really cheap. And some people say, hey, they laugh about it, but you know what? They were losing money. I remember seeing a recent annual report from an insurance company saying, hey, we're losing money on our regular long-term care insurance, but they're, they have these new products out, these life insurance and annuity hybrid products. The insurance company says they're very profitable on those products. So the newer ways that they're, they've created for you to afford long-term care insurance is much more profitable for the insurance company, which tells you one thing. Back in 2012, you were getting a heck of a deal on this, and it's just not there anymore. So you know, just realize that that was the case. But now that this is happening, it may not make sense to pay for this insurance. So what do you do? You know, if you're in this situation where you need this coverage to protect your assets and the premium's not 2700 anymore, it's 7000 what do you do? You know, what, 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 what do you do? Well, there are other things you can consider, all right? There's the legal planning option using trusts and annuities to, uh, you know, to quote unquote hide assets. Still allowed in, 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 in most states. I haven't checked all of them. I can't say that it's still allowed in all 50 states. But I know in Massachusetts you can still do this with a five-year look back. And in many other states you can also. Um, 
you know, so you can use that type of planning. You can use the annuity and life insurance hybrid long-term care pro products I mentioned earlier. They work pretty good if you have money in annuities uh, or life insurance or you have a lump sum of cash. It may actually work pretty well for your planning, but just understand it's it's internally the cost. It's not as good a deal, in my opinion, as buying that long-term care insurance was in 2012. And the insurance company is telling you how profitable they are just proves it. Yeah, they're still losing money on some of those old products, um, but they're making good money on the new products. So <clears throat> definitely can consider those. I mean, how each of those products works is beyond the scope of this video. But the point I wanted to make to you was, and this is what you need to think about is, first off, do you have a long-term care portion of your total financial planning picture? And if you don't, I mean, for young people, there's a great um, catastrophic disability rider you can add to disability policies, which acts just like long-term care insurance for young people. For older people, you got to now weigh the options of getting straight long-term care insurance or, or getting uh, one of these hybrid policies or doing the legal planning or some kind of mix of thereof. So going forward, your call plan needs to be number one is what is my long-term care plan if I were to get sick? Who's taking care of me? How do I want to be cared for? Where do I want to be cared for? And can we you know can we afford that? And you need to number one tell the people that'll be be involved in this decision making about it so they know your wishes. Super important. Number two, once you decided how and where you want to be cared for, what type of planning is going to allow that to be best put in place? I want to be cared for at home. I don't want to go to a nursing home. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. Tell the care, tell your people that, and also put that into your plan. And if it's expensive, now as far as the cost go, if you do that backtracking, say, okay, here's my cost profile. Now you gotta figure, can I afford that? And if you can, great. If not, maybe you've gotta do some, some hybrid stuff with the legal planning, et cetera. But just realize that um, you need to have this stuff laid out in a plan. If your plan doesn't include this element and it's not incorporated into the overall plan, then maybe you might wanna give us a call and that's something that we can talk to you about. You know, whether or not we can help you, I don't know, but I'd certainly be happy to have a conversation with you about, you know, whether your total financial plan includes this and, and whether it should and, and in what capacity it should. And um, if that's the case, you know, I'll put a um, call to action down below where you can click and, you know, click plan with Chris and you can, we, you can set up a uh, fill in my intake form and we can set up a call and see if there's, you know, some reason for us to talk some more and have a conversation. I'm also going to link below the, the uh, video I did on catastrophic disability insurance because I think that's good for young people to consider. And also uh, down below this, you know, if you have questions or comments, either go to my website, planwithchris.com, and submit them or do it on the intake form or drop them below. Um, if you have something specific to you, definitely do that maybe privately on the intake form. If you have more generic questions or suggestions of videos you'd like to see, drop those down below in the comment box. But definitely an important area of, of that people should be thinking about that a lot of people might have just, if they even bought an insurance policy, haven't really done a long-term care plan with, you know, thinking about who, the why, the what, the where. And so very important to put that in a place. And I'd be happy to help you with it if that's the case. Otherwise, you know, in the meantime, if you liked this video and thought that this was helpful to you, click like. And if you want to hear more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. I do videos like this on financial planning topics. I also do my entrepreneur interview series, which is a series I do that a lot of my clients have these have dreams about getting rid of their corporate job and starting their own thing. And I interview small, successful small business owners that are doing some of the things that you know, that a lot of people tell me they like to do. Like if you want to have your own coffee shop or your own consulting firm, you know, I have people who run their own little shops or, or do or attorneys or people working on their own that I've, that I've interviewed that can help you and give you some ideas as to what it's like to, you know, to go that route. So I also have some videos where I answer Quora questions. You know, Quora is that question site. I'll pick random questions during the week and answer them sometimes with a video and, uh, uh, and those videos end up on my on my channel. So I would love to have you subscribe or join our little community. And um, if there's anything else or any other generic questions you have or video suggestions, drop them below. Otherwise, you guys have a great day. I hope you found this helpful. Hope I didn't scare anybody. Just want to get you planning. Want to, I want you to know about this stuff. I don't, I don't want to anybody procrastinating when it comes to this and taking action and talking to a planning team about the best way for you. So thanks a lot for watching.
and hope this was helpful to you. Have a great day.